We understand there was a, a technical glitch and the live stream uh, stopped at some point. We understand, or I understand it was literally, as uh, so we've given the really wonderful and succinct answers to Charlotte, so um, <laughs> she's now from the BBC, so she's going to ask the same questions and hopefully we'll be able to give her the same answers. Brilliant. Charlotte. So yeah, I apologise if, if I am repeating myself. <laughs> but what measures are you going to take to police and enforce this change? You're relying very much on common sense, you relied on that previously, it didn't work. So at the high level, before I hand over to Richard, um, it will have the backing of what we call an order, which basically makes it enforceable under law. Richard. Uh, yes, we will have our enforcement team uh, out there. Uh, it will be uh, States of Jersey police officers, honorary police officers, and uh, environmental health officers, and uh, numbers in that have been supplemented recently. Um, yes, it does rely on people observing the law because we can't have a police officer trailing each and every one of us to keep tabs on us, but law works that way. And uh, can I remind you, Charlotte, of how well our island community did in the springtime when we had the lockdown? And uh, islanders were excellent in observing that, and we kept our numbers extremely low. Uh, and I really hope that islanders will understand the need once again uh, to, to limit their activity uh, without having all this enforcement activity. But rest assured that enforcement officers will be out looking. Um, uh, and uh, I would think, as we have seen uh, in the media, there are cases that are prosecuted and people are fined. Um, and, there is no re and that will happen again. I'm sure law officers will be prepared to prosecute inappropriate cases. Thank you. Great. So now we're obviously not seeing the bubbles. Um, we're looking more on the number of people rather than the household. This could be particularly hard for larger families. Um, so why was that decision made? That's a slightly different question to one you asked last time. But anyway. Was it? No, it was the same. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wrote it down. So. Oh, there we go. Um, so we did look at um, initially at households, and we basically found it got too complicated uh, when we went through all the types of iterations. So this is about as simple as we could come up with. And what we've done, so we're basically saying we need to put some limits in, and that's partially learning from, for example, half term, particularly keeping an eye on the whole festive period and the, the propensity, the tendency for all of us to, to you know, to socialise at a, at a fantastic time of year. Um, so what we said is we've defined what a group or a gathering is. We've said there's no more than three of those between basically the beginning of the Christmas period and just after New Year. Um, and the, uh, the definition of that group is between basically between 6 and 10 people inside and up to 20 outside. Um, and, uh, and obviously what, by, by putting the sort of 6 to 10, it's really to allow the point that if uh, a neighbour pops around for a cup of tea, that isn't captured uh, by the definition of a group and therefore doesn't then suddenly form part by accident of your three allowance during that period. Great. Thank you. Okay, right. Um, okay, we'll go uh, online. Uh, Stephen, JP. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very good. Um, I wanted to ask, um, the rules come in force on the 23rd, so what's to stop people when they have parties every night until then? Um, why are they coming into force sooner? Um, ah. Ah, okay. they're, they're, you know, not leaving a bit late and allowing people to you know, um, socialising large groups for another 12 days. Right, Richard, do you want to explain the position? Uh, yes, so there is, there is currently a, uh, guidance on gatherings um, which will run uh, up to the 23rd. Then from the 23rd until the 5th of January, the Christmas guidance that we've announced today uh, will come into effect. And then after the 5th of January, we will revert to the, the guidance that is in place now. Uh, uh, and um, e each of those sets of guidance will be backed up by legal orders, which will permit uh, enforcement of it. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, not quite to be honest. I just wonder, were they, I mean, were the, is the risk not there now? Will the risk not be there after the 5th of January as well? I mean... Uh, you know, what's the difference between 23rd 
December I, 2000, January, and the days times before and after. Yes, I, un I understand. We, we've basically kept to the, the same number. The, the uh, figure at the moment in current guidance is 10, that indoors there should be no uh, greater gathering than 10, and also outdoors 20. So we've kept to those numbers uh, because islanders have heard about them and I hope they're getting used to them. Um, but we had to recognize that over Christmas, uh, people are not at work, generally. Of course, lots of people, essential workers, do work. But uh, there are a large amount of people not at work. The, they, we like to, to socialize, meet up with friends and family at Christmas. And that was the greater risk. Uh, and therefore, we considered it with the medical experts. And the decision was made to... Uh, introduce the three gathering rule. So, obviously, we didn't want and we didn't feel we were in a position to, to shut down Christmas completely and say that nobody should meet anybody. We recognize that people do want to enjoy something of Christmas, but it's a case of finding that balance. So, we uh, decided that that three gathering rule was the, the right way to go. Yeah. Okay, do you want to go for a second question? Um, I'm just a, I'm sort of concerned as well about the enforcement of this. You say that you know you're relying on people's good. They 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 abided by the rules in, in spring. There will be enforcement officers out there, but they're not going to be coming into people's houses. I mean, hi, what's the balance there? Where, where will we see them, or where won't we see them? I just well, yeah, I can't see. I can't quite understand how you're going to enforce this without being quite sort of heavy-handed policing, as it were. Um, well, I mean, I, enforcement officers will be available um, if, if uh, calls are made to police headquarters, they will be followed up. Um, if members of the public see a gathering which exceeds the numbers we've set out, that will be investigated and, and followed up. Um, uh, in, in the same way that gatherings are enforced now, and, and were enforced um, you know, earlier in the year when we had stricter measures. Um, uh, so I can't, I can't that, that's all I can say, I think, really. I can't ex describe exactly how and when uh, the police would choose to take action. That is a, a policing matter, but they are ready to do so. But you would encourage people to contact the police then if they see a gathering which is too large? Uh, well, yes, I, I would, for the sake of uh, all of us. Uh, we need to suppress the virus. We know that um, gathering together is the way it spreads. So it's not telling tales. It's uh, acting responsibly to protect our most vulnerable people in the island. I think what I will say um, as well is don't forget uh, one of the issues we know happened, uh, particularly during half term, was with uh, parties, shall we say, um, was with parties and things uh, that, that did create uh, a spike, uh, a cluster. And so what we, by putting this in and putting with hopefully as clear as we can make it and um, with the law, and the law enforcement behind it, that's what we're hoping. That's the type of issue we're hoping to address during what is a, a normal, during what is usually a, a very festive period. Okay. Um, do we have 103, or have we lost 103? And do ITV next. ITV next. Oh, ITV next. Sorry. Okay. Gary. Evening, both. Good um, evening. On Monday, Chief Minister, you said, and I quote, the guidance needs to be as simple and <laughs> understandable as possible. Uh, in the past. 15 minutes or so, I'll just read you three messages I've had. Uh, one, I dare you to ask him questions while wearing a lab coat because you need to be a rocket scientist to understand this. Uh, another, I've just sent the government's Christmas gatherings guidelines to our 30 year old daughter. She asked if it was a spoof. Uh, another said, couldn't they make your rules more complicated? Blimey. Uh, that's from a civil servant. Uh, I just wonder, for their benefit, could you sum up the rules in 10 seconds, please, Chief Minister? In summary, inside, uh, you're allowed three groups between uh, Chris, start of Christmas, just after New Year, and a group is between six and ten people. You can meet up to 20 outside. 
Great, thank you very much. Um, I've also just been asked, if someone is coming to a household on Christmas Eve and plans to stay overnight so they're all together on Christmas Day, can they do that? Short answer is uh, yes. Um, uh, yes, and uh, um, yeah, if they, don't, if they want specific stuff, always have a look on the website, but yes, they can do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Um, Okay, I've got Harry103 down as next. Oh, I see. Okay. Hi, so I think now our connection cut off on the Wi-Fi. Yep. So I've got a couple of questions from Harry. Um, Scotland announced a non-essential travel ban on Jersey from tomorrow evening. What does that say about where the island is and what does that mean for people in Jersey planning to go to Scotland for Christmas and is there a risk that England and others could do similar with our current rate of infection? Well, we've, I think we've been through where our numbers are, and obviously um, in the same way that we've been rating people uh, for quite many months, actually, and under the red, red, amber, green, and a lot of people more recently red. Um, they've obviously uh, reciprocated. It is, it is for non-essential travel, as I think you defined. And, um, uh, and therefore, for example, I think students and things will still be able to come back as far as I understand matters. Um, so uh, that is the fact. But uh, again, at some point, our numbers will come down. Thank you. And Can I uh, just mention, I've got yep. an, an, a note of this, that um, Scotland's guidance already differentiates between parts of the UK and states that travel between Scotland and other parts of the UK is not allowed unless anybody wanting to travel has a reasonable excuse. And that applies to everyone who lives in Scotland um, and to anyone thinking of coming to Scotland. Um, there are exemptions and the exemptions include students. So any students studying in Scotland seem to be okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, second question. Hospitality businesses have sent you, the Chief Minister, an open letter calling for the same support that all industries received during the first lockdown and no less to save businesses and jobs. What do you make of their letter and what is your response? Obviously, I received your letter during the course of today uh, where we've been tied up in the States all day on the, uh, on the schools debate. Um, I think the short answer is... I've said, even I think, I uh, can't remember if it was Monday or the previous uh, uh, debate, that we will always keep these measures under review. If they become an issue, then uh, obviously we address it and we'll address those concerns. I make the point that obviously the circuit breaker uh, has really only been in not quite a week yet. Uh, and um, uh, we did say we'd review it next week uh, at the end of it to once we can see where we are in terms of the impact on, on the economy and, both, and public health. We have, though, already updated things like the co-funding payroll scheme, which is 80% of the employees' wages. And don't forget, we also introduced, because a number of them were, uh, were from the hotel side of things, which is what's called the visitor accommodation subsidy scheme, and that covers up to 80% of the hospitality business's fixed costs. And that's subject to what we call various detriment tests, and I'll stop there. But um, So we have put measures in place, some of which are in recognition of the measures that we announced uh, in, re in relation to the circuit break. However... I also recognise that December, particularly for the, um, uh, the um, uh, I was going to say that the hospitality side that we basically closed down, so of century restaurants and etc., is a very important time of year for them relative to their percentage of return that they take, and that's something we've very much got to keep under review. Uh, I think officers are away in just taking account of the representation that we made, but equally we'd already said uh, that some further work needs to be done just to see have we got it right or actually is more support required. Thank you. Okay. Right, Fiona Benewick. Thank you very much uh, this evening, Ministers. I was actually uh, hoping to ask some kind of medical-related uh, yeah. questions, but unfortunately I see we don't have Dr Muscat with us this evening, so hopefully you can do your best to answer them. Um, Health Minister, you said at the beginning of the conference that the impact of uncontrolled gatherings would see the number of COVID cases rise exponentially. So with this guidance in place, can you tell us how COVID cases will rise? Uh, well, of course, we are hoping that they don't rise. We are hoping that uh, within a matter of days, we will see uh, the figures coming down. Uh, if our hospitality uh, measures have had any effect and other measures that we've put in, in place. Um, as, as I've said before, just the fact of any gathering uh, does give rise to a greater chance of the virus being transmitted. 
um, and it's you know it's not a pleasurable thing to have to impose these restrictions. Far from it, but it, it all over the world it, it, we've realised the importance of staying apart, not crowding together, because that is the way that the virus transmits and causes its harm. So we've got to try and ensure that that happens in our community. If it helps, uh, Fiona as well, just to address the um, the comment by Ivan. Uh, is that he will be with me, as far as I'm aware anyway, uh, on the hot seat tomorrow at uh, lunchtime. A little plug for the BBC, I'm sure they'll be delighted. Um, and obviously, if there are technical questions, they can, uh, they can then um, uh, tele either email them in or telephone them in, and, and he'll be there. I will make the point that, um, uh, certainly for state's members, um, we started with a briefing at 8.15 this morning. Obviously, the debate finished at, I'm not too sure, 10 to 7 tonight. Uh, and, for example, Ivan and Patrick, I think Patrick made reference to his writing his notes for that briefing at 5 o'clock this morning. So um, it gives you an indication that the uh, officers, when these type of debates happen, when we've got the government plan coming through next week, and we've got Brexit still on the uh, horizon somewhere, officers are doing a lot of work, and particularly, um, particularly with Ivan and uh, Patrick and other people in stack, they are also still doing their medical responsibilities as well as their stack responsibilities. So there are times when um, they're not always going to be available at, at, at all the times we'd love to see them, but they are absolutely, um, well, I can't commend them enough and thank all the teams for the work they're doing. Okay, second question. I just I just wanted to get a bit of clarification, actually, just before I move on to my right. second one. I noticed, uh, Health Minister, you said hopefully the number of cases won't rise as a result of this guidance. Um, obviously, we, we'd like to know that this guidance is based on a little bit more than hope. Can you tell us, did Stack do any type of modelling before this guidance was put in place? Uh, so I don't sit on stack. I don't know uh, what their discussions were, but this guidance has been talked through with them and has uh, their approval as, as being appropriate. Um, uh, that, I think that's all I can say. Yeah, I think we, what we can say is, if you look at the other side, uh, uh, equally I, I can't comment on. I know they do uh, at various points today. We've had various advice and various references to various research reports that they have looked at on other matters. Um, I think the other comment is um, they know, and we've we've covered that already in terms of the clusters and things that we've seen with evidence from, for example, half term, what happens if uh, you don't have, uh, well, what the concern could be if we don't have the right restrictions in place over Christmas. It ultimately always comes down to the responsibility of islanders and the community. and uh, And I'm sure there'll be some people who think, it doesn't apply to them. Can I please make a plea now? It does. Right, Fiona, second thank question. You, uh, thank you for that. Um, can you explain why the age for children being counted towards the rule of 10 was set at three years old? Was that based on any medical evidence or is it arbitrary? Um, personally, I can't, I can't, as we said, we don't have the, the, the technical people here tonight to give any medical comment. I think what one's trying to recognise is that when one is interfering with the rights of all of us as islanders, particularly in our private homes, um, there's also got to be a, li a little bit of give and take in there. And particularly at Christmas, particularly with really young children, it didn't seem uh, sensible to, um, uh, to be included. You know, we shouldn't be including them within the type of limits we're trying to deal with. But um, I think within all that lot, is there a difference between uh, sort of two and three and four? That I, I don't know. Uh, it may well be the sort of uh, at what point and how dependent they are on on the parents, um, but the the principle behind it was really just to try and get a little bit of common sense around families coming together, particularly uh, on on Christmas Day. Can so I? In a sense, that's almost a relaxation of the rules. Then, I mean, at the current moment in time, as I understand it, children aren't exempt in any way, no matter their age. But for Christmas, you're saying it's okay to allow children if they're under three years old. There's a, there's a small relaxa relaxation, but I think that's, again, recognition of, of it's Christmas. But we've got to, you know, there's, there's limits, and there's also the point about, I think, for very young children, again, the risk of transmission and all the rest of it are, are generally deemed to be lower. Um, so, so can I add that I did discuss that with the public health team? We had mm -hmm. a, an interesting discussion on... on whether there should be that exemption and what age would be appropriate. And um, 
we decided on that that age uh, under three, basically because children over three are uh, walking and they're, 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 they would be moving around a household, uh, they'd be touching objects, uh, and although it's accepted that children um, uh, are not great carriers of the virus, it's, they are no risk. So uh, a child over three would be uh, behaving in much the same way in terms of their movements around a house uh, as an adult. So therefore, there might you could say there would be 11 people in that house. Um, but if you say a child under three, um, they're very much under the control of their parents. They might be carried or they, 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 they would be far less independent of their parents. And therefore, we felt it appropriate to say children under three. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Um, it is uh, slightly shorter because, again, it is uh, getting late on in the evening. But um, can I just say thank you for taking the time to listen. Your support and cooperation is hugely important to our ongoing efforts in combating the spread of COVID-19 in our community. And I'll repeat to be very clear, between the 23rd of December and the 5th of January, when you're indoors, you can meet as a group of six to ten people three times in total. Only one of these gatherings can happen per day. There is no limit on gatherings in groups of five or fewer across this period, but it is far safer you to meet with a consistent group and to do so outside and as ever to follow the physical distancing and the other public health guidelines. Thank you very much. I can sometimes be a lot to absorb but um, uh, if you need more details please uh, look on the on the website and, uh, and, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments in the due course. It is a difficult time. This is not something we'd willingly be doing what we want to really make sure is that we can, in some shape or form, as safely as possible, enjoy Christmas and enjoy New Year, but go into January in as safe a way as we can and to learn from the lessons that we have seen, for example, in half term, and to try to avoid uh, the impact that we saw previously. Thank you very much, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you again at our next press conference. Good night.